The fur is flown and my bracket is blown. Hard to believe, but it's the last week of Mammal March Madness, and the finals are tomorrow. Last night, of course, we saw the semifinal showdown between the brown bear and the Sumatran rhino. Some thought the Bruin was a shoe-in, but the rhino brought ruin. And in a match between the mythic and the miniature, the Yeti put up a surprisingly abominable performance. Its dreams sasquashed by the mighty dwarf mongoose. This is the watering hole with Adam Cole. Today, we'll look back at this year's tournament, Profile the finalists, and of course, take your calls. But first, we're joined by Harvard biology professor and Mammal March Madness commissioner, Dr. Katie Hind. Katie, what a tournament it has been. It has been exhilarating from start to finish. These animals have really brought it. 63 head-to-head matches, right. 65 species from around the globe. Yes, uh, from you know extinct species from 30 million years ago to animals that are threatened with extinction today. And they've all fought to remain alive in this tournament. Let's talk about some of our favorite moments. Oh, I think that hands down the most exciting round was a second round matchup between the brown bear mm. and the hell pig. Of course, known popularly as mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh versus Piglet. And the hell pig is a 12-foot giant warthog. You know, this prehistoric pig looks more like a big bad wolf, and a lot of people had it going all the way. People really thought it was going to defeat the brown bear, but the brown bear surprised us. It went Cobra Kai, Katie. Took a piece of advice from that evil sensei in The Karate Kid. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. A sensational move. The brown bear has been known to break the legs of hell pig-sized bison, and I'd say that move was the key to its second round victory. I would say so. Let's now take a look at the mini mammal division. How about that 13-seated lowland streaked tenrec? This is a very small, less than a pound mammal from Madagascar. The tenrec, of course, best known for inspiring both the hairstyle of celebrity chef Guy Fieri right. and the yeah. Wiz Khalifa song, Black and Yellow. And it's just about ten wrecked my bracket. How did it make it so far, Katie? The tenrec has these amazing quills, and it can aim them at its combatant. As they say, when there's a quill, there's a way. You're listening to The Watering Hole with Adam Cole, where we watch the creatures from the bleachers. If you're just joining us, we're here today with Mammal March Madness Commissioner Katie Hind. Let's now take a look at the final match broadcast tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. In one corner, we've got 1,800 pounds of rhinomite, an odd toad ungulate looking to beat the odds. He's rare. He's got hair. He's got more moves than Fred Astaire. It's the Sumatran rhinoceros. And the challenger, the Daryl Hannah of the vast savanna, the teddy of the Serengeti. He sliced through a yeti like a machete, weighing in at less than a pound. It's Africa's smallest carnivore, the dwarf mongoose. A study in contrast, wouldn't you say, Katie? Absolutely. The herbivore versus the carnivore is a really interesting final matchup. In 2013, a herbivore won the elephant. elephant. In 2014, it was a pack of wild hyenas, carnivores. And this match will be a tiebreaker of sorts. There was actually a press conference with the two finalists earlier today. I think we have a clip. The Sumatran rhino, of course, known for its beautiful song-like vocalizations, but it's been very stoic in this tournament so far. Not sure if it's making a statement or just doesn't want the attention. The dwarf mongoose, on the other hand, has been much more vocal. In some ways, that speaks to the way they've taken on this tournament, wouldn't you say, Katie? Absolutely. The mongoose has just been an aggressive competitor. While the rhino has bumbled its way to the top, uh, not a lot is known about the Sumatran rhino. It's famously a solitary species, only 100 left in the wild thanks to poaching and habitat loss. But we've got someone on the line who knows them well. It's Terry Roth, conservation scientist at the Cincinnati Zoo. Terry, can you hear me? Yeah. So what can you tell us about this species? Um, You know, they're not one that you would necessarily say, oh, it's beautiful, right, when you first see Mm. one, Um, but extremely original and sweet, actually. Um, That's what kind of comes across from them. Not a born fighter, then. Not a lot of violent encounters in the wild. Yeah, they don't have a lot of threats from other um, animals in their habitat. Um, You know, one of their escape mechanisms is simply to run away and to stay away from anything they're not familiar with. So how do you account for the Sumatran rhino's continued success? I mean, they can squish you without even realizing that's what they're doing. And sometimes that's a winning strategy. Thanks for joining us, Terry. All right. Thanks, Em. 
The rhino is thousands of times heavier than the dwarf mongoose, but if there's even an ounce of hope for the little guy, our next guest will know about it. We've got Andy Radford, head of the Dwarf Mongoose Research Project at Bristol University. Hello, Andy. Hello. So the question on everyone's minds, mongooses or mongeese? It's mongooses. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say... That's very disappointing. So I gather you think these underdogs have a chance. Yeah, I think so. I, uh, for starters, mongooses are, are, are never going to give up. They, they're game for anything, um, and they're, they're certainly not going to be intimidated by something much bigger than them, and certainly not something as, as lumbering as a rhino. We've certainly seen their ferocity in the arena, but what are they like at home? Yeah, okay. Um, they're really social. They sleep together in a burrow, often an old termite mound, um, and they do pretty much everything together. Um, So if they face a threat, they'll all stand together and support one another. Of course, that teamwork won't come into play here because these are one-on-one matches. Uh, Certainly in this tournament, even if it's only one individual uh, who's allowed into the battle zone, you can guarantee that they've got vocal support in the stand. And a friendly crowd, of course, goes a long way. Are there any other things that might contribute to an upset? So one of the huge advantages that these mongooses have uh, is the speed with which they can move. So you can totally imagine that uh, this mongoose is going to be able to tire out this Sumatran rhino by simply darting around and giving it grief from all different directions. Well, we'll have to wait and see how things work out in tomorrow night's match. Andy, thanks for joining us. Okay, cheers. Bye for now. That battle, of course, live tweeted tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take a break, but when we get back, we'll take your calls. This is The Watering Hole with Adam Cole. When animals attack, we talk about it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.